Welcome back to Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. My name is Jeffrey Kahn. And uh, today, I'm going to be in conversation with uh, Benjamin Bieberness, who is the uh, Global Industry Leader for Oil, Gas, and Energy for SAP, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, software company in the world, and Sentil Kumar, who is CEO of Sierra Digital, and Stonebridge, uh, one of SAP's important uh, partners in the development of technology for the oil and gas and energy industries. Now, SAP is, as you probably know, is widely used in oil, gas, and energy. And is, in my mind, certainly, absolutely foundational to the industry's business processes. Uh, in fact, my first experiences and exposure to SAP date back almost 25 years uh, when the wave of mergers uh, took place in the global industry between ExxonMobil and, and uh, BP Amico and many others. However, um, like all industries, technology industries everywhere are subject to the same forces of digital change, and uh, SAP is also driving to embrace cloud computing capabilities. And in that so doing, it's created this architectural layer uh, called business technology platform within which its ecosystem partners, such as Sierra Digital, uh, can help extend functionality specific to business process areas that are of interest to uh, different segments of the economy. Economy. Uh, Sierra Digital is building one of the very first solutions, and uh, in in the specifically for oil and gas in an area called production revenue accounting. Uh, and today we're going to explore this solution in some detail to learn the uh, the ins and outs of it, the the architectural foundation SAP is putting into place. It's imperative for oil and gas companies and energy companies in general to embrace this quickly, and the value that this innovation is going to release uh, to the marketplace. So, with that, let me bring uh, Benjamin and uh, Sentil onto the program. And welcome to you both. Good morning. And uh, morning, now you're both uh, calling in from Houston, I think, this morning. And uh, I, tr I trust uh, the weather is as nice there as it is here on the Sunshine Coast of BC. Uh, it's actually pretty stormy today, so if uh, we lose connection, you'll know why. Ooh, well, we can always re-record. So, uh, Benjamin, <laughs> let's uh, let's begin. I, I mean, th this uh, innovation from SAP is really, really important. I wonder if you could uh, kick us off by helping to elaborate, uh, really, uh, the, the importance of the energy industry writ large for um, for SAP. I mean, because the com company, of course, can focus on uh, focuses on many different industries, but but the energy industry is, is particularly key. I wonder if you could just uh, share a little bit more about SAP's commitment to that industry. Yeah, so you know we've been supporting the industry and working with them side by side now for you know over you know twenty years, and the E and R industries as a whole is actually one of the first industries that SAP focused on, and, and especially in the chemical industry. And we continue to expand with oil, gas, and energy, utilities, and mill money and and products. So, you know, I think we see the oil and gas industry uh, and energy industry as a key area for us to be focused on as SAP, especially as we're looking at the transition that's going on within the industry, right? We see the industry transitioning to be more sustainable and helping drive sustainability within the global economy. And we believe that the oil, gas, and energy companies are really the companies in the industry that can help drive that with their investments, with their experience, and without them, because we look at, you know, the heavy industries really contribute about 80% of the ESG produced globally. And without their participation, we'll never be able to hit the, the goals that have been set up by the Paris Agreement and other, you know, conversations that we've had globally. So I think it's important that these companies really are participating in the energy and sustainability transition that we're going through. And it's also being driven by right regulations. It's being driven by shareholders. Right, there's a lot of forces coming on to these companies that are driving this, which means that our companies are our customers are looking for an agile right environment to build upon, and that's really what we've tried to put in place with our intelligent sustainable enterprise platform that allows us to provide you know the core capabilities every company needs to run their company across all industries, but then also provide the industry capabilities and more modular capabilities as part of our industry cloud solutions on the business technology platform. Yeah, it's very clear that uh, just in the last six months, whatever paradigm energy companies in in regardless of what economy you're in or we're, or we're operating under has, has changed dramatically with the uh, uh, war in Ukraine. 
uh, being a yeah. critical driver. And the ability to, to your point, the ability to uh, react to that with agility, be able to re-vector supply chains, change suppliers, reorient to markets, respond to customer demand, and do all of that, you know, f- with uh, with high responsiveness uh, is really critical. And we should anticipate more of this kind of act, um, this need uh, as the future unfolds. Yeah, as new regulatory regulations come out, right, you're seeing the companies have to respond faster. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, there's we can ever respond fast enough as an industry. Uh, you, you hear different, you know, situations where oil and gas companies have been asked to, you know, accelerate their programs to more sustainable, you know, greener, less emissions programs and revenue models. And because of that acceleration, they're being asked, they're asking us as service software providers to make our solutions more agile to allow them to be moving faster and quicker to yeah, meet again, their, their needs. Yeah, exactly. It's really a, a total total architectural structure, which brings us directly into this architectural question. How is SAP transforming its architecture uh, so that it can take full advantage of cloud capabilities and unlock this this uh, drive for agility that you've you've highlighted? Yeah, so I think first and foremost, right, we're moving all of our solutions to the public cloud. So that, that allows for our customers to have some of that agility that just the public cloud offers, um, you know, people leveraging uh, those public cloud solutions. I think the, the other thing that we are doing is making sure that we have those industry solutions in addition to our core solutions in the public cloud and to allow our customers to be able to deploy those, you know, much more readily and, and, a bit, and um, scale to meet their business needs as they're, you know, increasing their revenue, say, in retail and maybe decreasing their production operations. And so how do we make sure that they have the right scale and agility within our public cloud offerings to support their businesses as they're transforming? And one of the key things we put in place is our business technology platform. And that's really yeah. about, you know, making sure that we have all the technology in place that allows customers to extend our core solutions and our partners to extend. And as part of our business technology platform, we, we've we included things that allow customers to do application development and integration, you know, the analytics with our SAP uh, cloud analytics, you know, the database and data management and the capabilities and those intelligent technologies really to help automate, you know, through machine learning or artificial intelligence robotics process automation, those types of things. So those are all helping, you know, provide that platform for our customers to really provide the innovations they need to, and then allows us to work with companies like Sierra Digital to let them provide those innovations uh, for our customers as well. And what we call those innovations is industry cloud solutions. And so, you know, we came up with this platform looking at why industry cloud solutions and what's important. And we see it because these industries are transforming. They need that more agile environment. They need solutions to be, come to the market faster. They need that agility we talked about. And then the solutions also, you know, there's so many new solutions that are being demanded by the industries, right? Almost every industry and customers are looking for standard solutions today, right? And the, historically, customers would want to build custom solutions. And now they're wanting industry standard solutions that, they can focus on what we used to say hear a lot about from our customers is you know 80% of what they do is non-differentiating and that's where they want to be able to buy standard software solutions to meet that need that other 20% that's where they want a platform to be able to innovate on and that's where our business technology platform comes into play so it's in a, in a, in a I'm very simple model in my own head here. I'm thinking about the kind of an app store construct, um, but much deeper than that because uh, you know an app store often you know if you think about Apple and its app store it creates little standalone applications. You're talking about something which is much more deeply integrated into the foundations of, of SAP, but at the same time able to work. Uh, seamlessly across the full uh, structural uh, feature set, that is way deeper than something as you know as a simple construct as uh, of an app store. Right. Am I thinking about that correctly? Is that how to think about that? Yeah, I think the way I look at it, the app store, like on an app, you know an iPhone is yeah, or you know the, your iPhone's kind of like an engine, and they build all these apps that do completely different things for you as an individual. And what we're trying to do with our app store and our core intelligent uh, sustainable enterprise suite is to have an, an engine there, but it also has all those capabilities that provide, you know, that foundational piece right, exactly. for an industry to operate, right? 
finance, procurements, you know, HR, yep. you know, intelligent asset management, all those core capabilities. But we want to be able to extend that because we know that we can't develop everything and meet all the industry needs. And so that's opening up our ecosystem to our ecosystem, the ability to build on our platform and extend our solutions. And so we're going to talk about that with Sierra Digital here, where it allows you know them to extend our production revenue accounting solution to provide these capabilities that our customers need around first purchaser and owner's portal and these other capabilities by us as SAP providing the APIs and that core foundational piece and them extending it to meet the customer's demands and needs that are going on today. Yeah, this is really, uh, really powerful as a concept. I think you have to do more than just open up the API set, though. <laughs> yeah. Really, you want you want a comp- your business partners, <clears throat> you want your ecosystem partners to have uh, uh, depth of capability to be able to competently p- develop code and, and solutions that work in that cloud. So how are you supporting the ecosystem partners like Sierra Digital and others to to, to be able to participate in this world? Yeah, I think you brought up a good point. So there's two points I think you brought up. One is we're very selective in the partners that we're choosing to be part of our industry cloud. We're making sure they do have that depth, that expertise in that area because they're an extension of us. And I look at it that way is that they're an extension of us. So we do things like this, uh, you know, this webinar with you and CR Digital Rights until to, you know, talk about how we're working together and bringing that expertise together for our customers. I think the other thing we're doing is, um, you know, we're enabling our workforce and our sales force. And so they know how can we leverage these industry cloud solutions to help complement what our core solutions are. So when you go into a customer and talk to them about what we can provide end to end, they have the, it's not just SAP solutions, but it's also those industry cloud solutions. And so that's a much better story for us to be able to bring the whole ecosystem to the table in addition to our core solutions and say, here's how we meet your end-to-end business needs. So, Sentil, this is probably a very good juncture to and, and pull you into this uh, discussion because uh, now that we've laid the groundwork here around the uh, the, the new t- architectural uh, uh, structure, um, so let's let's uh, uh, bring you th- uh, through this as the ecosystem partner. You know, what 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 does Sierra Digital do in the, in this context? What's your role here? So CR Digital is in the business of uh, implementing SAP for oil and gas customers for the last 20 years, like we call it as a system integrators and implementation partners. Also, we are kind of also an innovation partner with SAP for the last couple of years. Uh, as what Benjamin mentioned, you know, we are kind of early adopters of SAP business technology platform. Uh, and the, the project or whatever the uh, innovations we have started last year with SAP uh, is on the PRA and JVA side of it using uh, PTP. We are extending uh, certain product lines and solutions for, based on the customer needs where it is co-innovation by SAP and Sierra Digital. That's what Sierra do right now. And uh, just to kind of uh, blow some of the dust off of the acronyms, T- uh, TPP is <laughs> stands for what? Uh, the business technology the platform, platform is right? PTP. B- yeah, it is yeah. PTP. It is business technology platform. Yep. It is a platform provided by SAP in cloud, and it's basically kind of to innovate faster with business context. And it is an enterprise-grade platform, we call it. As, as what Benjamin mentioned, it kind of supports all the core exactly. uh, modules yep. of SAP and then use that as an extension to build. So your kind of uh, your security is all within the same system, even though it is a cloud, it's a native cloud integration for customers. Yeah. And uh, now PRA is this unique and specialized area. Uh, As someone who lives and works in the oil and gas world, um, Benjamin, you'd have known this because you were a consultant and advisor to oil and gas early in your career. Uh, Sentil, we, you know, this is, this is foundational to how an upstream oil and gas company actually exists is getting its PRA correct. But what exactly is that? Some folks who are watching this video might not know what PRA actually is. So uh, Sentil, let's start with you. How, how, when, when you're meeting with customers and you want to introduce uh, capability, how do, you, how do you enter the conversation around PRA? How do you make sure people understand what that actually is? So basically, PRA is uh, the full, uh, you know, the form of PRA is product revenue accounting. Uh, basically, that is uh, the module which they use uh, to set up your entire 
uh, the assets which is the wells and uh, how your asset ownership turnover, long asset life, complex production profile, everything is set up on PRA to kind of uh, measure uh, the oil, what they are taking out of the wells, and then how do they uh, kind of, uh, based on the JVA, the joint ownership, how kind of they split the expenses and the revenue. Uh, I kind of had put it in a simple way, but there is uh, hundreds of systems works on the back end to get make this work. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the complexity is the rules and regulations keeps changing. They have to do a compliance reporting. Uh, it's, it's a very strict compliance reporting they got. Uh, and there is a lot of multiple shared asset ownership. Uh, and there is a lot of turnover in the ownership. Uh, it's a complex production uh, profile, we call it as. Uh, I will ask Benjamin to kind of, you know, share some of his thoughts about, you know, what this journey on the PRA side. Benjamin? Yeah, I think with production revenue accounting, right, it's foundational here in North America. Let's just be clear about that, right? It's really foundational here because of the regulatory requirements that we have. And so, you know, we have this engine called production revenue accounting that has been in place now for you know many years that our customers are leveraging to meet those needs. But every year, those regulations are changing, and um, the amount of workforce is pretty interesting. I can't necessarily talk about certain customers, but I was talking to one customer. And they had like over 60 people in their PRA organization Ooh. just running that process. And so we've been working, how do we automate production revenue accounting and these other business processes through RPA and machine learning? How do you manage by exception with machine learning? So how do we leverage technology to help reduce the headcount? Because it's just very manually intense activities to manage everything that until was just talking about, you know, managing those customers engagements, those, you know, uh, at like we're talking about the owner's portal and, and so they can change their own information so they don't have to call in to someone, right? All of that activity just takes, you know, power, people power today to make that happen. And so, you know, working with companies like uh, Sierra Digital and using our own technologies around machine learning that we're trying to automate that because, you know, again, if they can take, if they can reduce that workforce, the company is actually trying to get that workforce down by half, down to 30 people. Yeah. They can now take those 30 people and redeploy them to other parts of their business that are more strategic for them. That's more value to them. Yeah. So it's not about reducing the headcount. It's about how do I make sure our resources are being maximized to provide more value to our shareholders. And the the uh, the, the the particular area of PRA is very rules based, uh, and yeah. therefore it is amenable to these automation tools. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think today, um, you know, because we, when it was designed originally. It, the machine learning and AI just weren't, you know, there and readily available to be leveraged to automate business processes like they are today. And so with that technology maturing, it allows us now to build those capabilities. And I think anyone that's familiar with machine learning knows that you need a lot of data, right, to really make it automated. So yep. that's why we tend to say that we're trying to teach it to be more managed by exception and learn from how our uh, the customers are interacting with the software to manage by that exception so that they're having them touch fewer transactions so that the system itself can learn, okay, if this is a scenario, then this is how I should respond and automate that as much as possible. So I think that's where we're working directly with our customers as part of our consortium to automate as much of that as possible yep, because right. that's where we see a huge opportunity. And then Centil and, and CR Digital are helping us extend that capability out to other components Again, trying to help reduce that number of people that are managing that day in and day out for our oil, gas, and energy customers. That's uh, things like the portals and the like. I'm imagining before yeah. the pandemic, if I were organizing a PRA organization, like an account uh, a function like this inside finance, right. I would have put all of these folks together in one location because it's convenient. You can do load balancing. You can move paperwork around quite quickly. That must have fallen completely apart during the pandemic because we couldn't bring people together into offices. Sentil, maybe uh, what, did you, what did you see happening during the pandemic that uh, kind of created a greater demand for investment in rethinking how PRA processes actually work? See, more than a PRA process, the entire industry kind of was, if you know, we were trying to preach, you know, uh, to the customers to move to the cloud, to the digital transformation, uh, I think last two, three years, if you see, uh, you know, it became a part and parcel of the life of every single uh, organization running in the globe. 
uh, to digitize as much as possible. Uh, the cloud enablement became uh, like it, it, it's not uh, thinking of it is the way you operate. The entire business itself is got changed. Uh, you know. With that said, you know uh, these are the things which kind of made it so efficient uh, of automating and because to automate, you have to digitize first. Once you digitize, then the automation of AI and ML, all this artificial intelligence comes into the picture. So you have to take the first step to get to the third step, right? So that started two, three years back, you know, in a much faster way. And we are really sitting here with a lot of assets uh, with SAP. We are co-innovating this, all the business process automation where the life is getting uh, much simplified in terms of the uh, user experience and then agility of using the automations, uh, reducing the workforce and making them to work on much better opportunities, uh, you know, within making them more value, you know, uh, uh, to the organization. Uh, that's what we have seen in the last couple of years, uh, Jeffrey. And what are the kinds of extensions and innovations that uh, quite specifically you've, you've brought to bear to help unlock this, um, this latent value or, is, you know, be, uh, Benjamin, to your words, um, 60 people down to 30? What, what are the innovations that are making that possible? I, I, I know you mentioned um, portals and the like, but what, what other sorts of things are coming to bear here, Senthil? So... <laughs> As what Benjamin mentioned, uh, you know, we we have three to four uh, different uh, extensions we are working with SAP. One is owner's portal where kind of we spoke about, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating a kind of a, a place where it's like a B2B portal. Um, and then everything is kind of getting automated to the BTP portal as uh, you need 40 people in the past. Once you kind of set this up, you might need only 15, 20 to run the entire business process uh, from the owner's portal aspect. We are also working on a divisional order. We are working with payout processes, which more kind of comes from the JVA side of the world, uh, you know, uh, joint venture accounting. And also we are working on first purchaser, uh, which is another important, um, uh, you know, extensions where, uh, you know, SAP is uh, working with uh, Sierra Digital to embark on the journey with so many customers on the line, uh, you know, on the feed, you know, that we are going to be working with. Yeah, it's a huge and, and uh, powerful uh, uh, partnership model is it, that uh, hopefully people can appreciate is being unlocked here. Um, Benjamin, this uh, ecosystem is, I mean, this has to be far bigger than just uh, just oil and gas yeah. and certainly bigger than this one process area. Uh, how do you see this uh, ecosystem working to help SAP customers protect their base investment in SAP and to extract even more value from uh, the technology they've already put into place? I think it's critical. Um, you know, if I go back to what you're just asking Santil about, you know, we stepped back in every one of our industry areas and looked at where do we have white space today? Uh, from, you know, based on our customer input, you know, where do our solutions maybe don't quite meet the mark? So where do, can we enhance them to do that? All the way to, we need, you know, brand new capabilities that aren't in our portfolio today. And then we step back and said, okay, well, what's the best way for us to do that? Is this something that SAP should provide? Um, or is this something that we should move to the market? And I think you've heard our leadership team at SAP talk about this before, but you know, when we are looking at the industry cloud, we're looking at 80% of those apps in the industry cloud will be from our ecosystem and 20% from SAP. And right now in oil and gas, we're about 50-50, but that's because we're still working with our partners like Sierra Digital to build out those capabilities. And so we have a roadmap of here's the capabilities we want, and then here's the partners that we believe that can meet this needs. In some cases, we actually bid out like you would for a new project at a customer Right. We've been out who can provide the best capability or best solution to meet our customers' needs, and that'll be uh, fully integrated with SAP. So fundamentally, I think this helps protect those customers that make that large investment into SAP and our ERP solutions as a whole, our intelligence suite. When they want to go best of suite, these industry cloud solutions become part of our suite because they're fully integrated through our industry cloud and our business technology platform. And so on. I would say this is the best way to protect the investment you're making and to extend the capabilities you need, right, to get more value out of our solutions. And a lot of times, 
these industry cloud solutions are bringing together three or four of our core solutions into a single user interface and capability that allows customers to get more value out of them. You know, an easy example is that is we're working on STO right now, shutdown, turnaround, outage, industry cloud solution. And that is bringing together at least four or five of our solutions, right, into one industry cloud solution that will meet the industry's needs to manage that even more efficiently. So, you know, I, I, to me, this is uh, uh, an extremely important strategy for SAP, but it's even more important to our customers because it allows them to really protect that large investment they're making. Yeah, that uh, just is a sort of a subtlety lurking here. <clears throat> but if you're if someone is an ecosystem player in SAP's landscape today, uh, the uh, the the proof point or the the skill set they're going to develop by working on some of these cloud applications is going to make them even more valuable and useful uh, to your customers down the road as you develop and expand yeah. uh, this footprint. So for the if if you're an SAP ecosystem partner out there and you're not paying attention to this development, <laughs> you should pay attention. This this is uh, it's going to be really critical. Um, Benjamin, outside of oil and gas, I know your, your world is oil, gas, and energy, but outside sure. of oil, gas, and energy, this architectural platform is a, a, something that would be uh, transcendent across all kinds of industries, manufacturing, yeah. telecommunications, <clears throat> banking. Is it fair to say that this is the model people should be anticipating for SAP um, across all of these industries? Yeah, so a couple things there. So I think it's two layers, right? At our uh, core layer, our um, our intelligent enterprise suite layer, we are looking at how do we bring our industries together? So we have customers, right, that are expanding their operations into retail. So you have companies like Shell, I think it said they want to have 5% of the revenue coming out of their retail operations. So we need to make sure our IS oil and IS retail solutions work very well together hand in hand. Um, and, and so we're looking at what industry solutions do we need to make sure are working together and fully integrated. So that's one layer of it. Mm. So we do see that convergence there. But what's, I think, even more to your point, when we did this exercise, we did it across all 25 of the industry segments that we support as SAP. And so when we go through on a regular basis and say, hey, our IMNC, our, industry, our construction management right, team and software and solutions, well, those are relevant to oil and gas in some cases, they are, our utility yeah. solutions are relevant to oil and gas capabilities. Our retail solutions can be relevant to oil and gas companies. So we actually evaluate them in conjunction with what we see as the business needs of our customers and say, oh, that retail industry cloud partner ecosystem solution is relevant to us is an oil and gas and energy industry. Let's include that in our portfolio. So when you go to our app store and you filter on oil, gas and energy, you're not just getting pure oil and gas solutions. You're getting you know, solutions that we believe are relevant to the industry as a whole. So I think fundamentally, again, this is an, a great opportunity for our customers because it's getting us out of our silos yeah, because exactly. our customers are, are moving out of their silos. Yep. And they're all starting new energy uh, or sustainable operations. So they want to be able to take advantage of all the capabilities. And again, that's protecting that core investment they made of our uh, sustainable intelligent assets, right? And now they can expand that regardless of which industry they're moving to. Yeah, and I think a particularly good example or precedent example for many companies, regardless of what industry you're in, is the need to do things like carbon <clears throat> accounting now. That's now yeah, going to become exactly. a yeah, it's going to become a requirement for every company. And to think that a retailer will somehow be best in class on carbon accounting for an extractive industry is is it, it isn't logical. <laughs> it's not logical. Correct. Exactly. So so it's the by the creating this, this structure, you you're you're subtly busting down silos that work worked uh, very, very well um, for the for, for many years, decades now, but now we, we need to bust apart those silos to create even more capability and functionality. Uh, Sentil, let me just sort of close off here with a, uh, uh, just a, a, an observation about uh, what you see as the opportunity this is going to be creating for ecosystem partners like Sierra Digital. Where does this, how do you see your business unfolding uh, as the, uh, this, this architectural uh, feature set becomes more foundational across SAP? Yeah, this is a huge opportunity, uh, you know, for the entire ecosystem, I would say, because uh, Till last 40 years, the way uh, uh, the business operated uh, in one single unified platform of SAP core um, on-premise platform, uh, where SAP takes the entire ownership for all the custom uh, business solutions and 
Also, if the SIs are getting in, they will uh, do a lot of customized versions. But when you do an upgrade, it's a big challenge for the customers, right? Mm. So now the entire future is kind of, uh, you know, it, it is in a different perspective of what SAP has come up with to the, all the customers saying, hey, keep your core clean, build all your industry extensions where we are providing you the platform with the complete support from SAP Germany, right? So what is the benefit for customer? Now you don't have to touch your core system of doing all your customized because every upgrades, you know, they have to go through that thousands of things to be tested. Yeah. And then when you, do, everybody knows this, right? And then when you're moving from one platform to other platform, it's 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 a, it's a nightmare for the customers, right? I feel that this is, is a great opportunity uh, for the SIs to be more, thinking through the innovations where we have started up the journey on building the extensions on PRA JVA, but we are also kind of having some dialogues on the sidebar conversations with SAP on sustainability, renewables, right? Which we are talking about the next 20, 30 year stuff because mm -hmm. all these renewables and um, uh, sustainability is all more about your compliances, reporting and the business process transformations because from oil, the customers are thinking about solar, wind, hydrogen, you need the systems in place to process the transactions. So how do you do as what Benjamin mentioned? Okay, I want the system in six months more agile, right? That's the yeah. BTP platform, right? We can do something for customers, you know, with their own requirements of what they got, you know, based on uh, their reporting strategy, their business process, we can quickly build something in the cloud and then kind of give that native platform of SAP, you know, as part of the, you know, APIs to bring the data back and forth from the financials and supply chain. So long story short, huge opportunity. <laughs> very exciting, very exciting future. <laughs> very exciting time. <laughs> Uh, um, Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin, final word to you. Where, where is, where, what do you see as the future for SAP in this? Uh, in this, where, where's SAP going to go with all of this now? I think what you're going to see is that you know, one, we at SAP are focused tremendously on sustainability, every industry, and we're working with customers across the board. Whether you know you're going to be producing hydrogen, or if you're uh, you know starting new LNG businesses. Um, you're going to expand in the retail. So I, I think no matter what, that's clearly a, a first and foremost on our mind. How do we help our customers with their sustainability transitions and reporting? And that's at that top layer. And you hear our CEO, Christian Klein, talk about the green ledger, which is, you know, basically, you know, the, the balance book for how much emissions am I producing versus how much am I reducing by, you know, carbon credits. Offsets, and offsets. what have you. Yeah. Offsets, yeah, offsets. So, you know, that's, how do we make that? And then how do we make this information of my carbon, right, available in my everyday operations? So when I'm buying a piece of equipment all the way through running that piece of equipment all the way to, you know, I'm selling a liter of fuel at a, a retail outlet, right? How much, what's the CO2 footprint of that? So I think I use the analogy of a lot of organic. It's kind of like today we buy organic foods or you don't. You pay more for them. Right. And some people say they test better. Most people think they're better for you. Right. So this carbon transition is going to be something similar as we're going to see in retail and other. You're going to say, hey, this tennis shoe. Right? There's a couple of brands out there that are now recyclable. Uh -huh. Right. They're tennis yep. shoes. Right. Yes. So I think you're going to see it be pushed to the consumers to make the right decisions. And we want to make sure our solutions help the customers, our customers and their customers have have the information they need to make those right decisions throughout the entire life cycle. So um, that's really where we're going to be focused on as SAP, but we can't lose sight, right, of our core foundational solutions, right? We need to make sure that your day-to-day -day operations are going to be up and running. The, you know, our focus is clearly to move everything to the public cloud so that you have that agility and lower total cost of ownership that the, the public cloud brings to the table. And I think those, if you look at our whole strategy, I feel very, very good about it because we have the foundational pieces, we have the cloud piece for the agility, and now we have these industry ecosystems to help us expand our capabilities even more with our partners. And it's, I think it's really a great opportunity for us to uh, work with our ecosystem and our customers to be successful on their journeys. 
Uh, Benjamin and uh, Sentil, thank you very much for coming on the conversation today about uh, these um, important innovations, in, and uh, this should be a very exciting space to watch. Great. Thanks right, thank you. Jeff. Thanks, Benjamin. I've been in conversation Thank with uh, Benjamin Bieberness, who is SAP's uh, uh, global industry leader for oil, gas, and energy, and Sentil Kumar, who is the CEO of Sierra Digital and Stonebridge, on the evolution of SAP's architecture and the role that uh, that is uh, uh, supporting organizations improve their agility, respond to uh, ongoing pressures in the climate and, and the economy, and uh, and as well the role of the ecosystem partner in helping to elaborate the solution sets. Uh, join me for another episode in short order.